We're often called out to do roof repairs, um, but not always is it the roof that's leaking. If we look underneath these coping stones, this particular cavity wall hasn't been constructed very well. And the more we delve into this particular job, the more we find that there's problems with the cavity wall. In fact, we couldn't find any problems at all with the roof whatsoever. We look inside this, I'll just stop this at this particular point. If we look at the insulation that's inside the cavity wall, uh, the snots and uh, the snots are what in, in the building term uh, are the cement that's oozed out of in between the blocks and fallen down and are bridging across the top of the insulation giving what we call thermal bridging, um, the outside wall which is cold, the inside which is warm, and now this will transfer the, uh, the cold across, which could give internal sweating. So when we look at this, is the moisture inside here to do with internal sweating, or is the moisture coming from the uh, coping stones, which had a bad damp proof course put over the top, and we'll go into that at a later day. And it's probably because of a bit of both. And the more the insulation gets wet inside, the more you get thermal bridging because wet insulation just doesn't work. Just look at this, how badly this has been put together. Um, even if it wasn't wet, you've got insulation everywhere. And again, this would give a thermal bridge across here because uh, there's no insulation. So very, very bad construction inside this cavity wall. Now from the outside here, I start to take out some different sections and I notice uh, an interesting scenario. If we look at the uh, sides of the insulation, this piece of insulation here, there was a side on it and the sides as I've pulled it out have been left inside. This outer side is a silver foiled face. Uh, inner side isn't. If that's case, that's a vapour barrier and this has been put in the wrong way round. So at the moment we're not sure if that's a uh, exactly what's happened here but we're exploring further and of course you'll also notice here that this piece of insulation at the end is different to the rest of it so it looks like as they've been building this particular cavity wall the insulation that they've sloppily put in there um, has come from all sorts of different places and is different and you can't have that because again you'll get different thermal properties reacting inside the wall after I've taken this section out and I place this on here, I, I realise this, look, look at the moisture. I mean, that's just incredible. And as I said earlier, wet insulation just doesn't work. So originally we were called into this job to have a look at why we've got this water penetration coming through into this room at this particular point. Uh, using a thermal imaging camera, we can see that there is lots of thermal bridging going on. The round circles are to do with the adhesive that the plasterboard has been stuck to the wall with. And this just shows that there is the wall behind the plasterboard is extremely cold and that cold is being take is coming through to the inside of the building. Um, and uh, thermal imaging cameras are really good for showing that. When we look at this from the outside, we can see water marks running down the wall from the coping stones here. We can also see these cracks, which we believe at the moment are to do with thermal movement of the render uh, on the wall on the outside. But generally speaking, the coping stone look like they are the problem so where have they gone wrong on this if we just if i just stop this for a second at this particular point first of all the plastic damp proof course that's being used here which has got the moisture on the back um, is not wide enough this damp proof course it should start five millimeters over either side and extend right the way across and it should be continuous from one end to the other end of the building now that's really, really important that it's continuous and to make it continuous, it's, it'd have to be welded together or stuck together. If I go back to this particular picture, any water that's getting in through any of these joints is gonna be running right down to that particular point. And if the damp proof course that is underneath isn't continuous right away from there and right away across to there, the water is gonna get through the gap and drip inside. And when that drips inside, the insulation is going to get wet and as I said before wet insulation doesn't work. Now not only have they used the wrong damp proof course but they haven't used a cavity wall closer underneath this one. Now the cavity wall closer stops it from bowing in the centre as you can see here it's bowed in the centre and with a bow in the centre any water that gets through the coping stones has then got the potential of running down the bow in the centre finding a joint if the joint hasn't been made properly and then dropping into the cavity below. 
So this is an example of a cavity wall tray going in so that the um, damp proof course can go over the top of it and it won't bow in the center. And this is an example of a proper damp proof course going over the top of the wall. Now this damp proof course is the full width plus five mil either side. This damp proof course is welded on all the corners and lapped up the walls ready for the coping stones to go over the top. The coping stones are bedded on, on a sand and cement bed and that sand and cement bed goes under the damp proof course and over the top so that we can then put the coping stones on top and bed them down nicely. Here I'm inspecting the work. Um, this is a lovely joint. It's a, it's a good rich mix. There's some sharp sand in there and we also put a, a, some what we call SBR which is a special additive that makes it slightly flexible and makes it very very strong. Underneath we can see the damp proof course sticking out five millimeters which is the recommended by the BS standard. We can see that the throat sometimes called the drip detail is nice. It's, it's open. Uh, any water that is going to come down over the top of the, the the coping stone and then with capillary action go across underneath it isn't going to make it across to the wall we have to ask ourselves why have all these problems happened it's down to bad specifications incorrect materials bad workmanship and nobody overseeing the works on site now there's more to this than meets the eye you take for instance going to purchase a damp proof course you'd think that'd be really straightforward wouldn't you the most readily available damp proof courses out there are these plastic ones but they can't be used when you haven't got enough brickwork on top of them to hold them in place now you try finding the specifications to some of these and then you've got to read through the specifications to make sure that you understand where you can and can't use it now I've been using the high load perma bit for some time now but even so it was difficult to find the specification even when you download it and you go through all the different scenarios on here it's only when you get to page 11 that you actually find that that particular product is the one that you want and the particular wording that you want to find is this. Well, sorry to rant on about this, but I see this all the time. And, and the small builders, the people doing the loft conversions and the extensions, if they're not supported, if they're not given the correct information, if the people who are doing the drawings, the architects, whoever's doing the specifications, if they're not giving the people on site the correct information, no wonder this is going to carry on and we're going to have all these different problems. I'm seeing an awful lot of this when I'm out doing roof inspections. Now, I hope this has been helpful to you. If you've got any questions or anything like that, like that please put them down below thanks for watching